All right, we are going to get started on our next lecture. So earlier we were talking about big O and how to make your uh, code less complex, more co less complex and more time, less, less time intensive. Uh, now I'm going to tell you about a few methods that they won't necessarily make your code less complex in terms of speed and memory, but they will make sure that your code is easier to read and understand and just looks nicer and more elegant. So some of these methods will go a long way to making your life easier. And I'll show you how in, a few, in just a little bit. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to be uh, demonstrating are lambda functions, which I know uh, John touched on a bit, and I'd like to just review again and you know, maybe take a closer look at. So what is a lambda function? Uh, let's say, uh, Carol, do you remember what a lambda function is? No. That's all right. Uh, someone want to jump in? Uh, who remembers what a lambda function is? Sorry, it was very. It was discussed very briefly. It's a unanimous, or uh, sorry, anonymous. Yeah, anonymous, not unanimous. Um, anonymous function, so it doesn't need to actually have a name, and it's kind of a one-time used in some other uh, line of code. Yes. So lambda functions are Python's way of allowing you to write simple one-line functions uh, that have no name. JavaScript is something you'll find a lot more anonymous functions in, but uh, jo uh, Python can do it too. So to show an example, I'm going to write a method called square number that takes a number as an argument and just returns the square of it, or just pr even just prints it out. So print number two. So we all know this. It's pretty simple. A lambda function does the exact same thing. Like in terms of functionality, there's literally no difference. And I can say I can save the difference is I can save a lambda function to a variable. So I can say a square number equals. I'll call this one square number L for lambda, just so we don't get confused. And to define a lambda function, it you use the keyword lambda to start with. And then you say what your argument is, number, colon, and then you say what you're returning. So essentially, lambda is equals def. This is your argument, and this is your code. And so we can call on these the exact same way, and we should get the exact same output. So I do Python, run the, run the, oh wait, I got to print this one. There we go. So pretty simple. And you can also write a Lambda function that takes two arguments. So if we wanted one called add numbers, we could just say Lambda number one and number two. And we want to return number one plus number two. And again, it would work the exact same as a function we uh, defined in the traditional way. Uh, any questions on lambda functions and how they are created like this? No. Yes. I don't know if this is probably something that's kind of out of the scope of what we're talking about. But for the lambda function, I was kind of curious if you could put, because I know that when John was going over an example of it in the school interface three, there was a conditional put in there. But I was wondering, is it possible to put a maybe, I don't know, force a for loop inside of it? Good was question. It I'm not sure if you can put a for loop inside of a lambda function. I believe lambda functions are restricted by the fact that they have to be exactly one line. Cheers, maybe there was something that was kind of a shorthand for a for loop that you could put in there. Oh yeah, I think we if you maybe we could do something like I think John did a list comprehension. Yeah, list comprehension. So if we did all right, like 
OK, I got one. If we do range to array, that we want to, it's some, a function we want to take a range, which is not an array, and convert it to an array. It's a lambda range. It's going to be called range obj. <laughs> and I can say something like return list range obj, or even something like another way to write that would be number for number in range obj. <laughs> So what this, uh, what this here does is it'll return, essentially just says return every item in this range as a, a thing in an array. So if I were to call range, I'm going to print it out, range to array, and I pass it range 1 through 10. I'll uh, comment out these other function calls. We should see an array of 1 through 10 or one through nine. So you can do some iteration in a lambda function by using notation like this, this for this in that. But anything that would require, I not, I, if you find yourself at the point where you are uh, iterating through something with a conditional, I would honestly just use a regular function at that point. Because again, a lambda doesn't do anything a function can't do. Uh, does that help, Kanisha? Yeah. Yep. Thanks. No problem. Would it be accurate to say that lambdas have to have an expression, not statements? Because um, so, it's because there's no return, but it's returning the result of the expression. But if you have just a statement. It's, that doesn't really return anything, so it can't work with that. So, uh, but do you mean something like, you know, we did lambda input and then just said 12? No, because that would return 12. Like, to answer the question, like, you put a for loop in there. Well, a for loop doesn't return anything. It's a statement, not, a, not an... Oh, yeah. Yeah, we couldn't uh, just put a for loop in that yeah. didn't return anything. You're right. So if it if it's an expression, I think you can put it in there, like kind of like how JavaScript's arrow functions. Uh, you don't have to use the return or the braces to denote a block if you're using an arrow function. If you're using an expression, but if you start putting statements in there, now you got to use the code block. But Python doesn't have code blocks, so it's got to be an expression, is what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does have to return. It has to be something that returns. You're right. All right. And one other kind of quirk about Lambda functions is that you can actually pass a Lambda function in as an argument to another function. So I do write a function called run this function. And it takes in some function as an argument along with a number. And I could, if I wanted to do that, I could say return some function with the other argument. So I could call on run this function and then pass in a lambda like x, x plus 2. And then as a second argument for run, run this function, I could pass in 5. If I run, if I print this out, the function is just saying, all right, take it. Uh, Here's a function, run the function with this argument, and then retur the return value of this function right here, this lambda, will also be the return value of this. And this isn't something that comes up very often in vanilla Python. Uh, this, uh, as we get into Django, we may find ourselves uh, using functions that call on functions later. But for now, this is just something to be aware of. It's a fun quirk <laughs> you can use. All right. So that's cool. Any other questions on Lambda functions before we move on to the next part? All right. So the re so you may be saying, okay, we have functions 
and we have lambda functions. Lambda functions do the exact same thing just in one line. So it looks cool, but what's the utility? And where lambda functions really shine is in Python's collection methods. And collection methods are essentially methods that repeat several, several of the patterns you may have found yourself doing over and over again, and just making it into a single line that allows you to do it quickly. So if I do, for let's say for example, I want a function that can take a list of numbers and return a list of the cubes of every number. So that number to the power of three. So I'm gonna say, I'll make something called map list. And I'll set that equal to a list of range zero through 10. So I print out map list. I should get a range zero through nine. Awesome. And so I want zero to the power of three, one to the power of three, two to the power of three, three to the power of three. And in the past, we've done something like this. So we got cube list equals an array for number in map list, cube list dot append number to the power of three. And then we print cube list. So this should look pretty familiar. We've all done this several times. Uh, I call this the sandwich pattern because essentially we have all right, define an empty empty list, iterate through, return the new list. And there's nothing wrong with this, but since it's such a common pattern. Uh, it was decided that people, we should make a, another way of doing this just to do it quicker, quicker. So that's where Python's map function comes into play. So map is literally just a function that does this, exactly as you see it now, just in one line. So if I do cube list equals, and I say map, and map takes two arguments. It takes something called callable, so some kind of function, and an iterable, so something we can iterate over. So in this case, my function, I'm going to define a lambda function. So I'm going to say lambda x, and we're returning x to the power of 3. And the second argument is going to be our map list. So if I print out cube list, I should hope to see a list just like the one we see there. Stop trying to be helpful. Ah, but we don't get that. We get a map object. So map in this case returns its own special class of object, but that's fine. We can easily convert it to a list just by using the list function right here. And that converts it into our list that we need to do. So again, this, so map does literally this. The main thing to keep in mind with map is that map always returns a function, I'm sorry, returns a list of the same length as the one you give it. So, what if I wanted, so for example, if I wanted to do one where I only return cubed numbers that are even, I could define a function for that, like in the, in the, old, the old, do it the old fashioned way, like, you know, cube if even takes a number and say if num, num percent. So I can pass that in here, just like the lambda function. I could just do a cube of even. But watch what happens if I do. So map 
what it, it runs that function and everything in the list. And we'll always uh, fill that list with whatever the return value is. And since I didn't tell it what to return if the number isn't even, it just returns none. So just be careful with that. Map is very powerful, but it'll also, it can also end up in situations like this if you don't want that. So kind of going up. So I'm going to put this back the way it was. What questions do you have about the map function? Uh, related to the big O set that we went over earlier, um, like so the using the lambda version versus going through the for loop is is one like different algorithmic. Mm -hmm. I forgot how to say it. Like mm -hmm. big O versus the other one. Good question. So iterator functions like this, like map, they save you time in terms of typing and in terms of how many lines of code you do. But again, map is literally just this. And if we wanted to calculate the big O of this function, it would have a big O of n, because the bigger the list, the longer it takes to do. And that's directly correlated. So in this case, most iterators won't actually save you in complexity in terms of performance. They will just save you in terms of complexity in terms of readability. So it's more, it's more efficient in sheer terms of just lines of code written. But it won't necessarily save you on time running the code. OK, thanks. No problem. What other questions do you have about map? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm just going to show you another fun thing you can do, just mostly to show off, really. So I can write a few functions like multiply numbers together, return x times x, add numbers together. It's going to, how did I do that? <laughs> return x plus x, def, you know, square the number. returns the square of it. It's tries so hard to be helpful, and it just makes my life more difficult. So I've just got these three functions here. I'm just going to show you a fun little thing I can do. So I can say uh, function. Does it matter that function one and function three are pretty much the same? Function one and function three? Yeah, oh, mathematically yeah. they're the same, but I just wasn't sure if that was on purpose or, or yeah. not. So, okay. Let's have it x to the power of x then and call this one. I don't know. What do you, what's the word for that when you t uh, do something exponent to the power of itself? They're not the same. No, they uh, were before yeah. he edited yeah. them. x times x is x squared. Yeah, let's just call this one self exponent. So I'm going to make a list of functions self exponent, add numbers together, and square the number. And you can actually, so, and the reason I'm doing this is I want to demonstrate that in many ways you can treat functions like a variable. So I can have a list of functions that I can loop through. So I can say, you know, for index in range, you know, range, will this be three? I can say value equals change it list, and then I'll run map. I'm going to write a lambda function. 
going to take x and I'm going to write x. So I'm going to call x on index. And our thing we're iterating over is functions to do. So what I'm saying here is I want to loop. I'll do this for i in range 5 then. I'm going 0 through 4 and just looping over each of these functions and, take at and returning them all as a list. So this should prove interesting. So I got 1, 0, 0, 1, 2, 1. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Going over this, so this is the self exponent, add numbers together, square the number, all as part of a list. So again, this is more of a cool trick. I'm not, you won't typically have to run a map function on a list of functions, but it could happen. And again, so you can treat, think of functions, whether or not they're lambda functions or regular functions. If you need to pass them as a round as a variable, you can just do that. And I'll be more clear about this because x is not very instructive. x is a function. So I'm saying, through my list of functions, run the function on the index. Did that make sense? <laughs> I know that's a lot, bit of a circus act there, I think. <laughs> All right. I'm going to show you one more iterator function called filter. So filter works on the same principle as map in the, as map in that it'll go over your entire list and return another well re, will return not a list but something like a list that can be converted into one. The difference is filter allows you to filter operates by different rules. So I'll say something like this filter list equals list range. Let's do one through range 1 through 51. So we get uh, 1 through 50. And I want to get everything that's evenly divisible by 2. So I'll say even numbers. And I'm going to say list. And then I'm going to call filter. And so my iterable is going to be the filter list. The, fun the, the function I'm going to use has to return either true or false. So I'm going to write a lambda function. It takes a number. And I'm going to say number percent 2 equal equals 0. And so this list will only be filled with things that this function here evaluates as true. So I print even numbers. I should only get the even numbers between 1 and 50. Yep, here they are. And again, you got to be careful when you're working with, uh, I'm going to uh, comment this out, when you're working with filter for the same way, you have to be careful with map. So map will just return a list with all the return values of the function. Filter will return everything that, retur that evaluates to true or truthy. So if I did odd numbers, and I wasn't very careful about it. And I did lambda number. And I did number, or like, maybe not odd numbers, like, let's do it. I finally thought of the words, like, <laughs> multiples of three. And so in, here I did number. I just did number percent three. And along with my filter list. What do you think this is going to return? Any guesses? Uh, two thirds of your numbers. Let's take a look. It just returns the entire list. Because this function, lambda number number uh, number modulo three, 
since this return this will just return a number the it'll just return a number oh actually yeah it didn't return the entire list it just returned it returned everything but multiples of three two-thirds of the list you were right because it returned either an integer or zero the integer evaluates to true the zero evaluates to false and so that's what the filter returns, everything that evaluates to truthy, whether or not it's actually a uh, Boolean value. So again, be careful about that when you're working with filter. What questions do you have about the filter function or the map function? Okay, in that case, I'm going to stop talking about that there. And so I'm going to get right into talking about assessment three. Just let me stop recording first. <laughs>